What's up guys, my name's Brandon and Apple just released iOS 14 beta 3 to registered developers over two weeks after the release of beta 2. Now we also got iPadOS 14 beta 3, watchOS 7 beta 3, and tvOS 14 beta 3. But in this video, of course, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 14 beta 3. So we're going to be talking about what's new in this update. We're going to discuss the performance, the battery life, the bugs, the bug fixes, the connectivity, the infamous storage bug, and more. And for those of you on the public beta, you should be seeing a new public beta update as early as tomorrow or as late as next week. So I will update the description in this video when it has been released. And I'll also let you know over on Twitter, like I always do. But anyways, taking a look at the size of this update, you can see here the size of beta three is 696.9 megabytes. So just under 700 megabytes here on my iPhone 11 pro that size will vary depending on your device. And that's going to be the size coming from beta two. It will be a little bit larger if you came from beta one, but let's check out the build number for this specific version. So you can see there, the build number is 18 a 5332 F. So that F at the end of the build number does indicate we do still have quite a few betas to go as expected for a first release of a major iOS software. And then you will see, we do get a new modem firmware update here as well. So we're at 1.50.20 on the iPhone 11, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. That number will also vary depending on the generation of your device. So before we get into the new features and changes in beta three, I do want to address the storage bug. This is the biggest bug in iOS 14 right now. And it was the main reason I recommended a lot of people to stay away from this on their main device or just a device with not a lot of storage until it gets fixed. So is it fixed in beta three? Let's go ahead and check that out. So if we go to my settings, general iPhone storage, and you can see up there, it's still not completely fixed, at least not for me. So if we go down to the bottom, you can see there my other is still taking up 24 gigabytes, which is way more than it should be, and nine gigabytes on the system, but we're mainly talking about the other here. The other is where the bug is and the issue is. So some people are reporting that the iPhone storage bug has been fixed, and a lot of people are also saying it's been semi-fixed, it's been somewhat fixed. And I would say that mine has been somewhat fixed, that did go down a little bit, so it's at least better than beta two, but as you can see, it's still not completely fixed. So that is one thing to keep in mind, and I will be monitoring this as well throughout the week to see if that drops for whatever reason, and I will talk about that in my follow-up video coming later this week into this weekend. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the new features and changes here in iOS 14 beta three. So the first thing you're gonna notice, the first thing I noticed when I installed this update is that we have a brand new music icon. So I have beta two on the left-hand side, beta three over here on the right, and you can see the music icon was white and it had this gradient in it, and now it is this simple red icon with just a white little music symbol there. And we do also have some changes inside of the music application itself as well. So if we go to our library right here, you can see already some subtle changes. So we do have icons next to the playlists, artists, albums, and songs. So we have little glyph icons right there. And then also the text is black instead of red. So it just looks a little bit more refined, a little bit cleaner here in this new beta. And then also when we go into an album, you'll see that the buttons are now gray instead of the red color, which me personally, I like the red color better, but that is a change here in beta three as well. You can also now share Apple Music songs to your Snapchat story. So very similar to how it is with Instagram like this. It looks very similar in Snapchat. So you can now do that if you are an avid Snapchat user. Also new here in beta three is the clock widget. So the clock widget has finally made its way over to the iOS betas here in beta three. So we did see this announced at WWDC, but we did not see it in the first two betas, but it is now finally here. If we go ahead and tap and hold on that, you can see we can actually change. This is where we change what time zone we want it to show. We can just add in the city right there. We could tap on it and it will show the one city for this individual clock. But if we go ahead and add another one, you can see there are different variations of it as well. So if we go down here, you'll see that we do have clock right there. Tap on that and you can see we get three different sizes right here. So you can either do just the city or you could do a world clock. So it's like this long widget right here with four different icons or four different clocks. Then we have these squared off clocks widget with also four different time zones right there. So if we just add this one right here, you can see this is how it looks, which is pretty neat if you do have maybe family in another state or another country, or you're just visiting you know, numerous places, this is a nice widget to have. Now, speaking of widget sizes, we do also have a new widget size for the smart stack. So if you go into smart stack right here, you can see we now have three different sizes. So in beta two and beta one, we just had this one right here, and then this one right here. But now in beta three, we get an extra large 
smart stack. So you can now have a much larger smart stack on your home screen, which is pretty nice. Also inside of the watch application, we have new hand washing reminders. So if you do use the new hand washing feature in iOS 14 and watchOS 7, which I personally love, there is a new feature in here now. So if we go into our Apple Watch and then go to hand washing, you'll see we have hand washing reminders right there. And it says, receive a notification if you haven't washed your hands within a few minutes of returning home. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And then if we go into our settings, you'll see that we do have location services for hand washing now. That's in there and you do need to have this set to always and set to your precise location, of course, so that it can track when you are arriving at home. Now, we also got a few new splash screens here in iOS 14 beta 3 to help users better understand the new widgets, the new home screens, and also the new app library. So this is what you get the first time when you go into jiggle mode. So it says edit home screens, hide unorganized home screen pages by tapping the page dots. So kind of just telling you guys how to hide pages, which I talked about already in previous videos. Then we get this one when you go to the app library for the first time. It says, welcome to app library, a new home for all your apps organized and smart categories. And then we have this one right here when you go to the widgets page for the first time. And it says, refresh widgets, press and hold a widget to reorganize them in jiggle mode. Tap the plus in the top left to add widgets. So it is kind of funny that Apple is now literally calling this jiggle mode. And if you guys are in the Discord server, you know all about the jiggle mode meme and the emote that we have in there. But anyways, moving on to a couple of other changes here. If we go into the weather application and we go down to the bottom, you'll see that we have weather four. And if you have it set to your current location, it'll actually use your street now. That was new in beta two, but now new in beta three, we have open in maps right next to where it's pulling the weather data from. When you tap on that, it will open up that location inside of Maps. Now this is also new in iOS 14. This was in beta two in the first public beta, but I just have not covered it here on the channel. And I did take a screenshot of this. So basically when you put in the navigation to go somewhere, it gives you this pop-up right here. So it says getting there safely, be safe and pay attention to your surroundings. Always observe posted signs and local law. So pretty interesting that Apple added this, just another little safety little message there in iOS 14. Now we do also have quite a few bug fixes here in the third beta as well. And the first one I noticed, and I don't know if this was a bug or not, but in beta two, you were not able to drag down to select email. So let me just show you guys what it was like in beta two. So if we go into edit mode right here and try to drag down, you can see we just literally cannot drag down on these emails. We cannot select multiple emails. Of course, we can do the two fingers like that, but I'm talking about when you go to edit, you cannot drag down on them. You couldn't do that in beta two, but now in beta three, as you guys just saw, you can do that very easily. So they added that functionality back here in beta three inside of the mail application. Also, Hey Siri is now recognized while sound recognition is enabled. So in beta two and in beta one, when you had sound recognition turned on, you were not able to use the Hey Siri functionality. We also have a few other fixes here as well. So guided access is now available in beta three. We also have a couple of fixes for voiceover as well. So it says voiceover users can now interact with the home screen after returning from the app library. That was a bug in beta two and the public beta. I did have a couple of people talk to me about that. Then we also have voiceover users can now answer incoming calls using the new banner display style. And then also the weather widget now appears to be fully fixed. So we don't have any kind of issues with the weather widget reverting back to Cupertino or just showing up blank. Those appear to be fixed, at least with the weather widget. I did still have some issues with other widgets just being blank, especially notes. So that's one thing to keep in mind that hasn't been fully fixed yet, but it seems like weather has been fully fixed. Now, one thing that you may notice after installing beta three is that the weather widget may not show up at all. So when you go to plus and then you go all the way down to the bottom, weather may not be showing up. And that happened to me as well. And what I had to do to get it back was just simply open up the weather application and then it showed up in my widgets. Some people did have to reboot as well. So just open up the weather application manually and then go ahead and check your widgets and it should be down there at the bottom. If not, go ahead and reboot and that should fix it. Now there are also some other bugs in beta three here. So the first thing I noticed was actually when I was checking out the storage. So when I was checking to see if the storage bug was fixed, I tried deleting things to make room. And that was actually where I found a bug. So if you go into my settings, general iPhone storage, and then go to, let's just say podcast, for example, and I'm going to try to delete one of these. So I'm going to try to delete this and the settings application actually crashes every time I do that. So if I go ahead and tap delete, you can see there the settings app crashes. So that's something I will report to Apple using the feedback application, which I recommend you guys do as well. But that was one of the first bugs I recognized 
here in beta 3. Also here in the release notes for beta 3, you can see Apple says 3D Touch is temporarily unavailable in iOS 14 beta 3. So if you still have a 3D Touch enabled device, that could be temporarily unavailable in this beta, but it says temporarily, so it will be coming back, but just keep that in mind. Now, there were some other bugs that I had in developer beta 2 and public beta 2, or the first public beta, and a couple of those were actually pretty major. So the first one was that there was a couple of times where my phone just completely would not charge at all. No matter what you know I used, wireless charger, wired charger, my phone literally would not charge until I rebooted the device. So that was a bug I've never experienced before, but hopefully that's been fixed here in beta three. I will let you guys know if that's been fixed or if I run into it again in my follow-up video coming this weekend. Another bug was inside of the messages application. So you'll see here that when I got sent an image, it just showed up as blank. And it just showed like image 7843.png didn't actually show the image until I tapped on it and went into full screen and then I could see the image. So. Hopefully that's been fixed here in this new beta, but once again, I will let you guys know that was present for me on the first two betas of iOS 14. Now there are also a lot of issues with FaceTime, so a lot of crashes going on with that. I was actually not able to hang up a call one time. It would just be completely black. The person on the other end of the screen just showed that it was paused, and for some reason it just crashed and you know I couldn't hang up. So just a lot of issues going on with FaceTime as well. I will test those out here in beta three and see if they've been fixed and report back to you guys in my follow-up video. I've also been having quite a few crashes on third-party applications. So I had a lot of crashes inside of the Amazon application specifically, and YouTube also seems to reload every time, you know, when I'm watching a video and I go out and then I go into another application, then go back into YouTube, it just relaunches and I completely lose where I was in that video. It's not even down there for me to click on anymore. I have to go into my history and re-pull it up. It's very annoying and hopefully YouTube does push out an update for that or if it's an issue with iOS 14, hopefully Apple fixes that in either beta three or the next beta. And then also over on Twitter, I did ask you guys what other bugs you hope get fixed in beta three. I asked this earlier today on Twitter. Once again, if you're not following me on Twitter, make sure to go ahead over there and follow me. I do give you guys updates constantly over there, but I just wanted to run through a couple of these and see if you guys are having these as well. And these are things that I will also be looking out for in beta three to see if they've been fixed. So you can see here that Zia said, whenever you scroll through the locations on the weather app, it bounces you back to the first location on your list. I want that fixed so badly. So I have had that issue as well, and I have not had that so far in beta three. So that does appear to be fixed. Michael here says that he wants the blank widgets bug to be fixed. And unfortunately that has not been fixed here in beta three. As I mentioned earlier, I still had that with notes and I did have it temporarily with weather as well. And then Alexander here said that widgets not changing from light to dark mode. And actually I did not check that yet. So let's go ahead and test this out in real time. So we're gonna go ahead and switch from light to dark mode and see if the widgets adjust accordingly. And it looks like this has actually been fixed here. So let's go ahead and switch back. And yes, so that appears to be fixed now in beta three. I did mention that in beta two as well. I just forgot to write it down in my notes. So thank you to Alexander for mentioning that. So widgets not changing from light to dark mode, that's been fixed. So before in beta two, sometimes it would get stuck in light mode when you were actually in dark mode and vice versa. So thankfully that's been fixed. It seems like Apple is continuing to optimize and fix a lot of these bugs going on with the widgets. And you can see a lot of people are just talking about the widgets in general and the widgets dark mode seems broken. Once again, we did just talk about that. That has been fixed, thankfully and then drop frame sometimes in the home screen that could be related to just having low storage and maybe an older device I've not had that in any of the betas so far and then we have people talking about the extreme video game lag and just lag in general or issues with third-party applications but that's mainly on the developers of those third-party applications not necessarily Apple and not necessarily the iOS 14 updates but anyways thanks to you guys who replied to that tweet earlier today now let's talk about the performance in iOS 14 beta 3 and this is another area that actually surprised me I did not expect it to be much different from beta 2 but it seems better. And I hate thinking this because a lot of times it can be placebo and it has, you know, has gotten me in the past. But after using this for, you know, over an hour now, well over an hour, I have to say that the animations seem faster here in beta three. So you guys let me know down in the comments if I'm having the placebo effect, if I'm crazy, but I think that the animations overall here in beta three are faster than beta one and beta two. I didn't really notice a huge difference in beta two, you know, coming from beta one, 
but from beta 2 to beta 3 i notice a difference in the overall fluidity and just the overall animation speed of everything so yes performance is absolutely great here at least on the iphone 11 pro and the ipad pro 2020 and i have also been using it on the iphone 7 plus here as well and it seems extremely solid there as well now i did run Geekbench scores, I know these don't mean everything, but I do like running them just to see what we get. And if we go to the history right here, you can see that we got a pretty strong score there. So we got a 1331 and a 3444 in the multi-core. So yeah, expect good performance here in iOS 14 beta 3. And of course the next public beta as well, since it will be the same build, you will definitely see an improvement in terms of the overall fluidity and at the overall animation speeds. And now let's talk about battery life. So obviously I have not been using this for too long, so I can't really judge the battery life in beta three. That's gonna be saved for my follow-up video. I will let you guys know if it's gone up or down compared to beta two. Beta 2, or the first public beta, was definitely better than iOS 14 beta 1. I talked about in my past few videos, but beta 3, I would not expect a huge change in battery life, but we might see a small bump. So if we go over to my iPhone 11 Pro Max, this is my daily device. I am on the first public beta right now. Let's go ahead and check out my battery over here and see what type of usage I'm getting. So you can see here over the last 24 hours, I have been using my phone for you know about 10 hours now. So not too much, not too little. And I've been noticing really good battery life. I mean, it seems just about as good as iOS 13.6 was, or iOS 13.5.1, any of the previous iOS 13 final builds. It seems just about as solid. I mean, obviously it does drain a little bit faster and you know, especially with the app crashes and the issues with FaceTime and things like that. But yeah, battery life has been solid so far and I expect it to be about the same possibly better here in beta three. And as far as connectivity goes, thankfully beta three finally fixes the airdrop bug. So in beta one and beta two, I was not able to airdrop files or photos or anything to my iMac or to any other phone, but now that has been fixed. So if you were wanting to airdrop and you were maybe holding off on updating until it got fixed, it has now been fixed for me. So now should you update to iOS 14 beta three? And I say absolutely, mainly for the storage bug fix. So like I said, if you go into your settings, general iPhone storage, the storage bug has been fixed for a lot of people. If it's not been fully fixed, it has been somewhat fixed. You will get some storage back in other down here. So you can see mine still takes up a good bit. Maybe it'll go down the more I use it. I don't know. I will report back on that. But that's the number one reason I would recommend updating if you're on iOS 14 beta already. And even if you're not, it's probably a lot safer to go ahead and jump on board now since there's not as big of an issue with the storage bug. And then not to mention you get better performance, you get the clock widget, you get a lot of bug fixes and things like that. So I definitely think beta three is a nice update tier. So that's pretty much it for iOS 14 beta three. Like I mentioned, there are probably other features and changes that I did not cover yet just because I've only been using this for a couple of hours now. So if I do find anything new and I do have other things to report to you guys, I will mention those in my follow-up video coming later this week. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that video. And if you guys found any other changes, let me know down in the comments below or over in the Discord server. If you are not in there yet, that link is also down in the description below. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up as well. It really does help me out with these videos here on the channel. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.